All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lupagus Show. I'm One Bar with Lupagus, and it's a beautiful Sunday morning. We're supposed to get a big old blizzard here shortly. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. So why not talk some latest Vikings draft buzz? We're going to get dumped with snow, so we're going to dump you guys with draft rumors. These were all collected over the course of the week. A lot mm-hmm. of them may have to do with the old trade-up scenario, but let's just jump right into them. I'm going to talk about them. One Bar, you can kind of reply and rebut. Mm. Um, all right, so this first one, this is per Albert Berry. So the Vikings trade gives us all a window into where J.J. McCarthy now stands in the eyes of NFL teams. But then he says, there are zero of the Bears, Commanders, or Patriots have shown an appetite for trading one of those picks. Yeah. No, I think we're, I think we're going to end up with four or five. Uh, it, uh, if if Patriots are easily the, the top one that would trade out, and they are going to want just a monstrous load. Haul. Just a monster haul, and I think I think the Vikings are just fine with JJ McCarthy. So I, I'm 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 preparing myself. It's going to happen. Well, maybe if you don't like what Albert Beer says, you should listen to uh, old Alec Lewis because he says this. When asked which is more likely, trading the first three firsts and getting May, or trading two firsts and landing McCarthy, Alec Lewis says I think the first outcome is much more likely than the second. Well, I think I. It's- yeah, it's because they're offering three first round picks. So like Patriots, while they're like just kind of maybe holding tight, somebody else comes up to them with th- three first round picks. I think it's a different story. So yeah, I, I that makes sense. I mean, just weird. I don't know. Two- I, I, I'm just in a real bad place right here. Like I'm, I'm preparing myself for JJ McCarthy, four five. Give up our two first round picks. Fine, so be it. Uh, I do like Drake May. If they end up giving mm-hmm. that first, extra first round for Drake May, I'm like, all right, fine. They got their guy, but I don't know. It's yeah. going to be a long next 30 days. Absolutely. I'm going to skip this next one because it's kind of already talked, but let's go into this one here. Uh, oh, Quasi, I'm sure we may have already mentioned this, but he just talked about the trade on KFAN. He said, we just thought the move gave us the best flexibility for whatever can happen. I would say at this point, there's a preferred scenario, but the process is ongoing. Preferred scenario. Again, I think we touched on this, but is that is that trading up into the top five? Do you think that's his preferred, or is it all the way up to three? I don't know. Really, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they got. I'm sure they got like three preferred scenarios. Like they got scenarios coming out of their assholes. Uh, they have to because they don't know what they're doing. They haven't made a trade yet, and the the other team can do whatever the hell they want. So they better have a ton of scenarios, and they all better be fairly preferred. But I'm sure it's three, four, five, randomly just staying there at, with their current picks. They no, must have it, a scenario for everyone. If they don't, then they should not be GMs. And it could be a prospect, too. That scenario might involve a certain prospect over another one. We don't know what that means. All right, per NFL Draft Scout, uh, ESPN Draft Analyst Insider, the Patriots have so many needs and could explore the trade with the Vikings. With two picks in top 34 and four core needs, I could still see New England being a trade-out candidate with Minnesota to collect more draft capital this year. So... Another opinion on the whole situation with the Patriots. Yeah, I mean, if you're the Patriots, like, if I'm the Patriots, they don't have a quarterback, but what's the point of bringing in a quarterback when your your receivers are K.J. Osborne? I mean, what is Osborne? Like, they're number one right now? I don't even know who's there. Is Juju Smith-Schuster there? Yeah, he's still there. I mean, why not put some pieces around, get these first-round picks, and go for that quarterback next year? You're still going to suck. I don't get it. Like, they set these quarterbacks up to fail. The Vikings well, are in a perfect opportunity to bring in a quarterback, and he's just going to light it up. So, New England, just do us a favor. Yeah, and I could see them take him. And but he, again, if you're New England, don't don't force the quarterback on the field. He's going to suck. He doesn't have any weapons. Maybe next year he's uh, going to be a bust. Don't do it. This one was interesting. Patriots college scouting director Cameron Williams has liked one tweet in 2024. A that. tweet speculating the Vikings are sending a Godfather offer for two or three. Uh, so. Yeah, that was the one tweet this guy liked, who is a scouting director of the Patriots. Yeah, that, and then he went and unliked it. Someone must have been like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you a moron? You've never liked anything, and you like that? And yeah, uh, the uh, I mean, maybe maybe the 2025 first-round pick isn't even where it ends. Maybe they throw in a 2026 second. I mean, maybe they just get absolutely butt-ass naked and butt-wild and go Herschel, Wackles, Herschel Walker style and, uh, and trade up. Godfather. They might. All right. This is per Alec Lewis. If the Vikings are committed to snagging a top three quarterback, it's doubtful they will be able to keep their 2025 first round pick. If the Vikings are okay ascending to number four or five for an option like J.J. McCarthy, they could conceivably keep their future firsts. Yeah. I mean, if they go up to three, 
It's gone. It's gone. I mean, what what what's your preference? M- McCarthy at four, we give up two firsts, or uh, Drake May, we give up three firsts. I don't know. The, the latest buzz feels like no matter what, we're gonna give up that future first. So, oh my uh, word, I don't <laughs> believe it. No way. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I don't four know or five, and we have to give up three firsts. My thought on it is this: If the Vikings truly believe May is that much of a better prospect, then I'm fine with it. Um, if they believe, I'm gonna go with what the team says on this one. Uh, but um, yeah, personally, I think I'd try to keep my pick. Three firsts for JJ McCarthy at four or five to me seems a little nutty. It seems mm-hmm. a little nutty. I mean, and then the Giants are the other team that want to trade up. Cardinals clearly want to trade back. The Giants aren't going to offer that much. Yeah, they can't. They don't even have a second round pick. But they got pick six, which is much sexier than 11. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the Giants because according to Albert Breer, he thinks the Giants are very much in play for a quarterback. I think the Giants are considering drafting a quarterback either at six or as part of a trade up into the top four. My feeling is the Vikings are going to actively try to move into the upper reaches of the draft. Yeah, it's going to be the Giants or Vikings if they trade up. I I want the Giants to stay at six and just weirdly take Bo Nix or just something absolutely insane, uh, Mm -hmm. which I think is absolutely possible. I want the Giants to just step on their dick and take something just goofy as hell. You're taking anything goofy as hell? Taking anything? Probably. I'm not going to go into detail about that. All right. Uh, speaking again, the top four uh, Cardinals general manager Monty Austin for is going to be listening to offers for the number four pick. I think he actually described it as a flashing for sale sign. Uh, this one to me was a little surprising because I, I thought the Cardinals were a team and maybe he's just seeing what he can get. But they did the trade down last year. I really thought they would stick and pick and get an elite option like Marvin Harrison because uh, that's what they really need. But who knows? Yeah, come from yeah. the Patriots. I think he said the sign was on. Did he say it wasn't flashing? I say, don't know. I thought you said it was flashing. Yeah, they're open for business. Why wouldn't you? I mean, let these teams, like the Vikings, who are absolutely desperate, and maybe the Giants, who need that quarterback, like just absolutely lay it out on the table. Like I keep saying it, but if I'm the Cardinals, I want to trade back with the Giants. You still get that one of those top receivers, mm-hmm. and you're still going to get uh, a decent haul. Where if you go back to 11, I mean, obviously, you're still going to get a good player, but uh, you miss out on those top three receivers. So on the Cardinals, I'm listening to the Giants. Well, and to me, the Cardinals, uh, they're kind of like the first three teams. Like, I feel like they need to get that superstar player, uh, which would be Marvin Harrison Harrison Jr. It's the Chargers to me as a team I actually think wants to move down. Like, I think they would actually take less of a deal because they have multiple needs. They have no receivers right now. Their old line is shit. I feel like that's the team that really wants to move down. You can maybe get, you know, just 11 and 23 and something back. Well, hell yeah, uh, they could they could get a, a hell of a tackle even at twenty three. Get a Bowers mm-hmm. at, at eleven. I mean they they uh, on the Chargers that that's perfect case scenario. But yeah. if we go to five, the Cardinals better stay there and take Marvin Harrison. Oh, and you guys sit and watch the board, so it'd be very. Can you imagine if we for ended us. up with Bo Nix at pick eleven. Uh, no, it'd be no Nix. No, Nix. All right. According to uh, Doogie, he said there's still very real interest in quarterback Jaden Daniels, but he's just saying don't sleep on the Vikings' interest in Jaden Daniels. Yeah, I got interest in having a really nice tan uh, too, but you know it's just not going to happen. It's not possible. Like, I've ever seen Jayden, like Daniels isn't even in the realm of my mind. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I have realm him in the back. Mind. Yeah, in the realm. Not there. Yeah. He's not there. He does not exist when it comes to the draft for me. There's no uh, way Washington's giving that up. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you never know. You just never know. It's the draft. That's why I always keep every possibility. Yeah, but I, I'm actually canceling that one out. Uh, I'm, I'm keeping a little bit of the hope alive there. Uh, per per DK Sportsbook, the Vikings are the favorites to land these quarterbacks in April. J.J. McCarthy plus 100. Michael Penix Jr. plus 250. They have the second best odds to land Bo Nix plus 200. And the third best odds to land Jaden Daniels plus 600. Oh, Drake me May go. odds haven't been on the sports books. Yeah, I think that's probably pretty fair right now. It's it's probably mm-hmm. accurate. All right, let's jump into some other guys the Vikings have met, met with or are meeting with. Tony, I Pauline. know one guy that's on the list. You settled down. Tony Pauline says this: Did the Vikings miss out on a quarterback? Their contingency plan is drafting defensive tackle Byron Murphy at pick number eleven. The feeling is the Vikings were giving off at pro days is that Murphy will be their con- contingency plan at eleven if no signal caller is available. Yeah, I mean, look at what they've done on their defensive line. Byron Murphy, good value. We missed out on a quarterback. Vikings fans are absolutely losing their minds because we don't still don't have a quarterback. We're to wait till 23. But Byron Murphy, I, f- I feel like Byron Murphy is going to be the guy that I've never really been that excited about, but he's just going to end up being super good. 
Yeah, like a Kevin Williams. I'm mad we were. Make me look like a fool that I am. God, we were pissed when we got Kevin Williams. I hated Kevin. I want Thrill Suggs, Jimmy Kennedy. Damn. The mo- the words that came out of your mouth that day. Fall. Oh. <laughs> All right, oh, uh, Vikings. I've also shown interest in FAU defensive tackle Evan Anderson, according yes. to Tony Pauline. He's 319 pounds, just over six foot, and ran a 5'240 yard dash to go with his 30 inch verticals and 31 bench reps. And yeah, he's like a projected undrafted free agent, late round guy, but I think he's ended up going sooner. He's a big old monster. I, Did I you watch him? him? I love that dude. I watched his highlights. He, he's a hustler, man. He, he's a big guy, just running all over the field. Uh, yeah, I, like I, uh, I really really like him i i actually reached out to him hoping he'd come on the show and crickets but you know what i'm still oh, no. trying <laughs> still trying <laughs> yeah keep trying according to tom pelicero the vikings have a pre-draft visit with edge dallas turner out of alabama it's weird it is weird Do, it is doing weird. their due diligence i guess and and an edge rusher at 11 if we don't trade up uh you can never have enough but i was surprised to see that one mm-hmm. yeah um again who knows maybe he Maybe he falls 11, and we we take him. All right, the Vikings also spoke with quarterback Ben Bryant after Northwestern's pro day. He's expected to be a day three pick in this year's draft. I know nothing about Ben Bryant. Um, I guess I just look at that as like if they were actually to use a draft pick on a quarterback, then Jaron Hall might as well just pack his bigs. Yeah, that's that me too. Weird to me. That's the only thing you can pull from that, like – Unless that's a camp body, I don't. Hey, know. you can never, you can never have enough quarterbacks. I mean, keep bringing them in. That was one of the big things that we never used to do. I mean, we'd always just not address the quarterback position in the draft. And if you're going to double dip or triple dip, whatever you're going to do, mm-hmm. you'll find strike gold. I haven't dug into this guy yet, but I'm going to um, Missouri cornerback. Uh, Missouri had, had their pro day, and the sources say corner cor- cornerback Chris Abrams Drain was slated to meet with the Saints, Patriots, and Vikings before the festivities. 40 career pass breakups and seven interceptions. Yeah, I saw that today. I don't really know anything about him either, but um, based off his stats, sounds like he knows how to get his mitts on the ball. Mm-hmm. Definitely going to take a peek at him. Maybe he'll be my draft crush this week. I don't know. He I might be. I I, lo- I love those cornerbacks in college that can get uh, picks. Yep. Just love them. Uh, last week, the Vikings met again with Adisa Isaac, edge from Penn State. This is their second meeting with him, the first being at the Combine. According to Tony Pauline in 23, Isaac has 16 tackles for a loss, seven and a half sacks, and a forced fumble. He's a potential day two pick, uh, so Vikings may have to move up to get him. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, like, they're not going to get him in round four. What, no. What the hell? Trade up? You know, they're going to trade our beautiful fourth rounders, fifth rounders, and just day, day three is just going to suck ass? It's weird that they... Uh, Met with him twice. I just really like this guy. Again, you could be setting the stage for a future free agency as well. So, uh, again, sometimes it's you got to play the long a game. A lot of planning ahead. I don't I don't get that angle at all. I think they do it. All right, and finally, finally, the Vikings met with Florida State defensive lineman Braden Fisk on Thursday. Minnesota had defensive coaches watch Fisk at FSU's Pro Day. Oh, my God. I'm exploding in my pants. I mean, this would have to be pick 23. It would be. <laughs> Unless you trade like, down a little bit. I don't know. He's worthy of that pick. You take him at 23, I have zero issues. Uh, Byron Murphy, then him, and then our quarterback is just uh, Jaron Hall, I guess. But no, it'll, it'll be that guy from Northwestern. It will be the guy from Northwestern, Benjamin. Um, yeah, this is this is that was odd. Like I don't know how they would end up with him. Like I said, they're doing their due diligence. They're meeting with everybody. You got to meet with these top guys. We see defensive linemen fall. Uh, every damn year, and maybe he will fall on our laps. I don't see it happening, but I'm I'm just glad they met with them. They did. They, Makes uh, my heart happy. Apparently, they were tickled pink with them too. I don't see how you couldn't be. God, he's good. He's gonna be so good. All right, that is your Vikings draft news and rumors of the week. Let us know in the comments which one maybe tickled your fancy, made you nervous, got you excited. We clearly know which one got Wilmar excited. Mm, explosive. And also, guys, remember this. Uh, just last week, a live 12-inch eel was removed from a Vietnamese man's abdomen after it slid up his anus. Oh, lucky. 